Hi to Kevin for introducing me. And a very good evening to everyone. Today we are in the National Baby. And I'm here to talk about Nobel Prize in Physics for this year. So, Nobel Laureates of this year has helped us in understanding the fundamental questions about our universe. Topics like how did our universe begin? How did it has evolved? And what's our place in the cosmos? Topics like these were explored by these in this year Nobel laureates, and James Whipple got uh, the Nobel half of the Nobel Prize for his theoretical discovery, the physical cosmology, and the other half of the awards was shared by Michel Mayo and Didier O'Connor for discovering an exoplanet orbiting around a sun type of star. And before our question, therefore, I would like to talk very briefly about our cosmos, what we know about it, and just present a current picture for the universe. So, if you look, this is a picture from Cosmos taken from Hubble Space Telescope. And here you see a variety of different beautiful objects like galaxies and some of them the stars. And if you go back about 100 years ago, then astronomers like Edwin Hubble used their telescope to observe these kind of objects. And what he noticed that these objects, particularly galaxies, were moving away from us. The universe was expanding, it was growing. What we see as our universe today is not the same as yesterday, and it will be not the same tomorrow. And since these objects were moving away from us, so if you go past in time, it means that these objects were together, and they were much denser and closer to each other. And this led us to the formulation of the Big Bang of our universe, which is the Big Bang. So initially, the universe was hot and dense condition, and as the time passed away, the universe started expanding and it got cooled down and different types of objects like galaxies and stars came into existence. So, if you want to summarize about the Big Bang and about the evolution, we can do this in a picture like this. So here, the very Big Bang of the universe was a hot and dense phase of the universe and this we call this as a Big Bang. And then, after this moment, the evolutionary phase of the universe took place for a year of 14 billion years of history. And then, at this time, the gravity rolled in place and the different particles started combining and different kind of objects like galaxies came into existence. So, starting from the Big Bang, it was a cosmological history and from the expansion and from the expanding of our universe, different type of objects came into our existence. And then finally, in the present, we have our own Earth. So, James Weber helped us in understanding the evolution of our universe. And then finally, Mr. Mayo and Dijo Kellogg helped us in exploring how unique is our place in the cosmos. So, let's see how James Weber has helped us in understanding the beginning and evolution of our universe. So, let's begin from the very beginning. So, the Big Bang was hot and dense condition of the initial phase of our universe. Try to imagine that here in this picture, the different red and yellow circles are the teeny tiny particles, the very, the very smallest particle, and the, the, the white color you see here is the light particles, the light which we see here. Assuming that these are the light particles, and it was very hot and dense condition. It was so hot and dense that the light particles couldn't escape. But as the time passed away, these tiny particles started combining with each other and they formed the fundamental particles, they formed the fundamental elements and at this moment, the universe was a bit cooler and it was a little denser, such that the light particles could escape from the universe. And this was the first moment or the first glow of, of the initial phase of our universe. This is the Big Bang and we call this in, in simple terms, we call this as the first light, but in scientific terms, we can we call this as cosmic microwave background radiation. And here you see the cartoon picture, which like, is, the, is the explaining the way how the first light originated from the Big Bang. And here the elliptical picture with the greenish and bluish color is the real scientific picture of the first light of the universe. And J. Ripple, in 1965, he made an important theoretical contribution in understanding the origin of the first light of the universe. And this light was by chance detected by Pansyas and Wilson in 1965, 
And actually, they contacted James Ribbon for understanding what they are detecting. And they got the Nobel Prize in 1917 for this discovery. So it was the first time that James Ribbon missed his Nobel Prize. But, and since they have detected the first light from the Big Bang, so it gave an important support that something like Big Bang has happened in the past. Later, in 1966, James Ribbon used again the idea of first light to calculate how much matter or how much matter should, how much mass should form during the Big Bang, like the formation of fundamental elements like hydrogen or helium. And what he calculated in 1966 matches exactly with our current observations. So this was a kind of summarizing the story of the beginning of our universe. But what about our presence? Like what about our present time? We see different kind of objects. And for this, I have a very simple question for you all, and I hope that you will answer this. Does our night sky looks like this? Simple yes or no question. Yeah, I guess the, most of the people agree with the no and not yes, because if you go outside, even at this time, you can see some stars, and on a clean light, you can see many stars, and if you use a telescope, then you see galaxies. So how these type of objects have aided in existence? So James Riddle, he again came into the game, and he helped us that how these objects can aid in existence. So he said that the first light, which is the first glow of the universe, like how the first light is spreading in the universe, how it has spread in the universe, it should not be very smooth because as the time passed away, if there is little differences how the first light has uh, spread in the universe, each uh, little differences can grow into further objects because of the gravity. Since if, if there is a little difference, then each object can grow together because of the presence of gravity, and we see different kind of objects like galaxies or other stars, and further, these, these uh, clumping of matter of little particles also lead to the formation of our own planet Earth and Sun, or we, the objects we see nearby us. He made this calculation, he did this in 1980, and later, in 1992, this little difference in the first light was detected by satellites and George F. Smooth and John C. Mather won the Nobel Prize in 2006 for this discovery. So this was the second time when James would have missed his Nobel Prize. So it's kind of unfortunate that a theoretical physicist is missing Nobel Prize again and again. But this year, finally, he got the Nobel Prize for explaining us the beginning of our universe and about our evolution. So the tiny slice of matter which formed galaxies or the stars which we see around us also formed planet or our own home planet and objects which we see nearby like sun or moon and other objects. So this part, like how unique is our Earth, was explored by Michel Mayo and Didier Collins. So here you see a picture of our solar system. This, this is really a fancy notion that are we alone in our solar, are, are in this universe? Are we the only one which are star gazing in the universe? So now we know that since we see different type of stars, there are billions of stars. So we have to detect whether there are other planets revolving around other stars. And this, this we call as exoplanet. If there is a planet around any other star except our solar system, we call this as an exoplanet. So it's really hard to detect an actual planet because, because the presence of the sun, because the presence of the star oversize the presence of a planet. So imagine, like just see here, it's a picture of our sun, and here, if you notice carefully in the center, you can see a black dot. And this is a picture of Mercury as seen from our Earth. So if the star is very far away from us and it's just really bright, then it's really hard to detect. Uh, a presence of a planet because it's over, it is oversigned by the light of a star. So how we are going to detect a planet? And here, I'm just showing you a little uh, technique how we can detect the presence of a planet around a star. So try to imagine that we have a star somewhere in the universe, as, as our own sun, it's somewhere in the universe. And if there's a planet around it, of course it's not going to be visible because it gets oversigned by the light of the star. But if there is a planet around it, 
by chance, then we see that the presence of the planet, as it is revolving around it, it affects the, the motion of a star because the gravity plays role and it start, the stars also kind of starts making motion. And here we see the light coming from the star getting changed. Like uh, we have the basic simple effect, like if uh, an object is moving away from us or it's coming near to us, we see that the light form is getting changed. Like when an object is moving away from us, then we see that the red light is coming to us. And when an object is moving near to us, we see that the blue light is coming to us. And this, in, in scientific terms, we call this as a Doppler effect. And this also happens even with the other stellar system, that if there is a planet around it, then the presence of the planet and the sun uh, or, or the star, it causes uh, the star to make motion and uh, when the star moves away from us, we see that the red light is coming to us and when it moves near to us, we see that the blue light is coming to us. And this, uh, this kind of change in the light of a star it, uh, signifies that there might be presence of planet around it. And this was a method used by Michel Mayer and the Jewel College and they used this technique in November 1995 and they detected the first exoplanet around in our universe and it was a hot planet and this was like they detected this planet around a sun type of a star and with a sun type of a star I mean a star similar as our sun which has the same physical properties and the same temperature and this opened like they, they there were people who have also uh, discovered planet but they were not confident and I should add two words here like these people they were real people who were confident and very sure about their uh, about their study and they were the, they, they were so confident that they told us that they they have discovered a planet and even before then there was few people who found that they might have detected a planet but they were not sure about their discovery so having such a confidence they made sure that they have detected a planet and this opened a new vibrant field in astronomy or in physics. And till now, we have detected 4,000 exoplanets in our universe, and there is, they are still yet to explore. And recently, with our scientific and technological advancement, now even we can study the atmosphere of exoplanets. And recently, people have detected water in the atmosphere of an exoplanet. So, beginning from the starting phase of our universe, we are at the level where we can detect water in the atmosphere of exoplanets. But there are still some fundamental questions to explore. Like, no one knows what happened before the Big Bang. Although we have detected 4,000 exoplanets, and even at this time, we can detect water on the other planets. But are there life elsewhere somewhere else? So these are fundamental questions. And I really uh, motivate, try to motivate people that trying to think from the common point of view that what we can think because Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. So try to imagine what could happen before this phase or is there life somewhere? How could be like this? So finally, I would like to present a message for all you to take home that starting the initial phase of the universe was really hot and dense and this we call this as a big bang. And the first glow or the first light which we have from the Big Bang, this, this we call this in the scientific term as cosmic microwave background radiation. And this has helped us in understanding how different type of objects like galaxies or the stars came into existence. And then finally, the last message that we are not unique with our solar system. There are world of exoplanets existing in the in our universe, more than 4,000, and there are, we are going still further to discover more. Thank you. So um, we have some problems in the microphone, so we can go to one microphone and we pass it to each other. <laughs> so uh, someone has a question? Uh, here? Has a question? Um, thanks, where are you going to stop? Uh, I have a question. How can you distinguish the first light from so much light around us? So she asked me how could you distinguish the first light from the 
uh, from this piece kind of life. So, uh, very simple thing, if I'm moving towards you below my screen, if someone from very bad, like in very simple terms, uh, if I'm coming to you, you know my speed, like how fast I'm coming. But if there is someone very far away, imagine the other part of Germany is coming, then life takes time, how far, how fast it is coming. So the first light has already lost its energy, and now it comes into the very low energy, energy regime. And if there is sun, it has higher energy particles. So this led us to distribute between the energy sources. Hi, thanks for the, for the talk. Uh, like, okay, like on average, I guess it is 30 years to win a Nobel Prize, something, something like that, and the more theoretical than other. But regarding like the guys who found actually discovered the exoplanet, why did it take so long? I mean, like it was clear right? after years, at least I don't know, I, I, I say five, six years, okay, like actually they discovered the first exoplanet, but why did it take so long? So, he asked me why did it took long to detect an exoplanet. So, yeah, was this the question? Yeah, why did it take so long? Yeah. So imagine, he, yeah, he is a star and I'm a planet. And if I'm longing on it, then the, the effect I produce on it, this uh, uh, this star is like 0.5 meter per second. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You should ask this with a, you should ask this with a no no I could not answer this. But uh, of course they, they are you could consider them as the father of exoplanet thing, okay? And this led to revolution and I guess even James did this in 1965, whatever he did this, and he is getting after like 60 years.